the question of why Jesus being God, prayed to God, is a profound and significant issue that has intrigued many throughout the ages. Delving into the Gospels, we find that Jesus frequently sought moments of solitude to pray. A clear example is found in Luke 5.16, where it states, But Jesus often withdrew to lonely places and prayed. This verse underscores Jesus' habitual practice of seeking quiet spaces for prayer. This practice leads us to wonder, if Jesus is God, wouldn't he essentially be conversing with himself? Far from trivial, this question opens the door to a deeper exploration of what Jesus' human and divine nature entails. Christian doctrine teaches us that there is only one God, who exists eternally in three distinct persons, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. This does not imply the existence of three separate gods, but rather one God in three persons. A useful analogy might be water, which can exist in three states, ice, liquid, and vapor, yet remains water. Similarly, God is one being, existing as Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. In John 14:26, Jesus speaks of the Holy Spirit in a way that highlights his individuality. But the Counselor, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you all things and will remind you of everything I have said to you. Here, Jesus presents the Holy Spirit as a distinct entity, sent by the Father and acting in Jesus' name, reflecting the unity and distinct roles within the Trinity. So, if Jesus is God, part of this Trinity, why did he need to pray? This question is central to understanding Jesus' ministry and mission on earth. Jesus, being fully God and fully human, devoted himself to prayer. His prayers not only reveal his intimate relationship with the Father but also play a crucial role in his earthly mission. Through his prayer, Jesus teaches us about the nature of communication with God. Jesus' nature is extraordinary and unique. As fully God, Jesus possesses divine capabilities, he can perform miracles and save people in ways only God can. But at the same time, he is fully human. He experiences hunger, pain, suffering, and death. It's as if he had two complete sets of qualities, divine and human. Imagine having superpowers, but at the same time living as a normal person, experiencing everything we experience, with the exception that Jesus never committed sin. Jesus' prayers are not a dialogue with himself but a manifestation of his relationship with the Father, and an essential part of his existence as God and man. His prayers are an example of his humility, his dependence on the Father, and his role in the salvation of humanity. Exploring these prayers, we can deepen our understanding of the complex and beautiful nature of Jesus, and what this means for our spiritual lives. We believe in the duality of Jesus, as God and human, because it helps us understand how he was capable of performing miraculous acts and yet, experience life as a human being. The nature of Jesus is one of the deepest mysteries of the Christian faith, and it is through his life, death, and resurrection that we understand both his divinity and his humanity. A key aspect of Jesus' ministry was his model of prayer and reliance on the Father. Jesus lived in a way that showed he did not act on his own will but that of the Father. In John 5:19, Jesus expresses this idea clearly, Very truly, I tell you, the Son can do nothing by himself. He can do only what he sees his father doing, because whatever the father does the son also does. This indicates that Jesus awaited God's guidance before acting, just as a child observes and learns from their parents and does not try to do things by himself. When Jesus faced one of the most difficult moments of his life, just before being arrested and crucified, he prayed intensely. In Luke 22:42, he expressed his desire, but also his submission to God's will, Father, if you are willing, take this cup from me, yet not my will, but yours be done. This prayer shows his trust in God's plan above his own fears and feelings. Another important purpose of Jesus' prayers was to teach his disciples to pray. He did not keep his prayer life secret, but shared it with his friends. In Luke 11:1, 1, the disciples asked him to teach them to pray and Jesus responded with the prayer known as the Lord's Prayer. This prayer is a model of how to speak with God, including praise, the petition for our daily needs, forgiveness of sins, and guidance for living rightly. Jesus' prayers also serve to express his human emotions and needs. For example, in the Garden of Gethsemane, described in Matthew 26:38. 
Jesus experienced deep sorrow and anguish. The Bible recounts, Then he said to them, My soul is overwhelmed with sorrow to the point of death. Stay here and keep watch with me. Here, Jesus, known for healing and helping others, is overwhelmed by such profound sadness that he prostrates in prayer, seeking strength and guidance. In Luke 6 12 and 13, we see Jesus seeking God's direction before making significant decisions. The Bible says, One of those days Jesus went out to a mountainside to pray, and spent the night praying to God. When morning came, he called his disciples to him and chose twelve of them, whom he also designated apostles. Before choosing his twelve apostles, Jesus spent the entire night in prayer, seeking wisdom and guidance. These stories remind us that Jesus was not only a spiritual figure but also a person who experienced deep emotions and had needs like any other person. He experienced overwhelming sadness and sought quiet places to ask for guidance, showing that it's okay to do the same when we face difficult times or important decisions. Jesus' prayers are a powerful example of how to live close to God, talk to Him about everything, and trust Him with our lives. In biblical narratives and teachings, Jesus is highlighted not only as an example to follow but also as someone who lived an impeccable human existence, fulfilling all aspects of divine righteousness. This idea implies that Jesus embodied complete obedience and submission to God's will, His Father, something that often seems challenging to achieve in our daily lives. The Bible, in the book of Hebrews 5 7-8, vividly illustrates this aspect of Jesus' life. During the days of Jesus' life on earth, he offered up prayers and petitions with fervent cries and tears to the one who could save him from death, and he was heard because of his reverent submission. Although he was a son, he learned obedience from what he suffered. This passage highlights how Jesus, being the Son of God, learned to obey through suffering, showing that his prayers were not mere formalities but profound and emotionally charged supplications. Furthermore, Philippians 2.8 delves deeper into this idea by describing Jesus' humility and obedience, and being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to death, even death on a cross. Jesus not only obeyed in easy circumstances but his submission to God's will was so extreme that it led him to a painful and humiliating death on the cross. His life was not about easy choices but about constant surrender to divine designs, even when this meant supreme sacrifice. What truly makes Jesus' life remarkable is his complete humanity. He experienced the same feelings, temptations, and pains as we do, but unlike ordinary human beings, he never failed in his mission and obedience. Each of his actions, words, and thoughts were in perfect harmony with what God wanted. He did not live for himself but for God and for us. Jesus' perfect life is significant because where we fail to be righteous, his existence offers us the chance to be seen as righteous before God. It's as if he passed the test of life with a perfect score in our name. By believing in him, it's as if that perfect score is applied to our own record. The analogy of following a recipe illustrates this point well. For us, following a recipe perfectly is practically impossible, there's always the risk of errors in measurements or cooking. But Jesus, in the kitchen of life, flawlessly followed the divine recipe, living the life we should have lived and offering us the reward as if we had achieved it ourselves. Understanding Jesus' perfect obedience and submission allows us to appreciate the incredible gift offered to us through faith in Him, a gift that encourages us not because we can earn it, but because it is freely given, in testimony of the perfect life He lived in our name. The importance of prayer in Jesus' life is also crucial. Prayer for Jesus was not a mere religious duty or a public display but an essential and natural practice, akin to breathing, forming an unbreakable bond with His Heavenly Father. Despite being the Son of God, Jesus demonstrated His dependence and trust in God through prayer, teaching us that prayer is more than asking for things, it is about keeping our relationship with God alive and fresh. An example of this is found in Luke 3.21, which says, When all the people were being baptized, Jesus was baptized too. And as He was praying, heaven was opened. This moment underscores the constant and profound communication between Jesus and His Father, where important decisions were made, love was shared, and strength was found. Even in crucial moments, like before raising Lazarus from the dead, Jesus expressed His trust in the Father through prayer. 
John 11 41 42 records his words, Father, I thank you that you have heard me. I knew that you always hear me. These words reflect an act of love and trust within the Trinity, showing that even being God, Jesus relied on prayer as an expression of his relationship with the Father. Jesus' life, marked by perfect obedience and submission, offers an example of how to live in tune with divine will, facing challenges and sacrifices with faith and trust in God. His story teaches us the value of obedience, the importance of prayer, and offers us the opportunity to be seen as righteous before God, a gift of unmerited grace and profound love. The gratitude Jesus showed in his prayer was not a mere show, it was the Son speaking to the Father, confident in being heard, an intimate exchange full of trust and love. This reveals the heart of prayer, it's about trust. When we pray, we enter into that circle of eternal love and trust, telling God, I depend on you, I trust in you, emulating Jesus in his attitude of complete dependence. Prayer was also the means by which Jesus fully embraced his humanity. The Incarnation, which is God becoming man in Jesus, does not merely imply God in a human disguise. Jesus truly became one of us, and being human involves recognizing our limitations, our need for help, our need for God. Jesus made this clear when facing difficult moments, he sought refuge in prayer. A striking example is the prayer in the Garden of Gethsemane, where deeply distressed about his impending crucifixion, Jesus prayed, Father, if you are willing, take this cup from me, yet not my will, but yours be done, Luke 22:42. In this moment of struggle, Jesus taught us that it's okay to bring our deepest fears to God, but he also showed us that the essence of prayer is trusting in God's way more than our own. In Jesus' life, prayer was his way of staying close to God, demonstrating trust and love within the divine family, and living his human life with all its challenges and joys. When we pray, we follow Jesus' steps, getting to know God intimately and personally, trusting him with our lives, and embracing what it means to be truly human, just as Jesus did. The intercessory role of Christ is another important facet of his ministry. In John 17 9-23, we find a moving moment where Jesus, known as the Son of God, speaks with his Father on behalf of his friends and followers. Jesus prays for their protection, joy, unity, and for their sanctification in the truth of God's word. He says, I pray for them. I am not praying for the world, but for those you have given me, for they are yours, John 17 9. This prayer shows Jesus' special concern for his followers, aware of the challenges they would face in the world. But he goes beyond, praying also for all who would believe in him through their message, my prayer is not for them alone. I pray also for those who will believe in me through their message, John 17 20. This indicates that Jesus thought of each one of us, desiring that we all might be one, united in love and purpose. Additionally, in Paul's first letter to Timothy 2 5, Jesus' role as a mediator between God and humanity is highlighted, for there is one God and one mediator between God and mankind, the man Christ Jesus. A mediator acts as a bridge, facilitating understanding and resolution between two parties. Before Jesus, humanity was separated from God by their sins. Jesus, by living a perfect life, dying for our sins, and rising from the dead, bridged the gap, becoming the sole intermediary between us and God. When we fail or sin, Jesus intercedes for us before God, as if saying, I have paid the price for their mistakes. This is astonishing because it means we can approach God directly through Jesus, without the need for other intermediaries. Jesus is our direct connection to God, and when we pray in his name, he intercedes on our behalf, ensuring that we remain in communion with God. Understanding the depth of Jesus' care for us, it's clear that he actively engages in conversations with God, advocating for our needs, our safety, and our unity, both among ourselves and with him. Jesus' mediation is crucial, allowing us to have a personal relationship with God despite our faults and mistakes. He acts as a bridge, ensuring that despite our imperfections, we can maintain a close connection with God prayer, in Jesus' life and mission, was much more than a ritual. It was an intimate encounter, a sacred space where he met face to face with God, sharing everything in his heart. In these sacred moments, 
Jesus gained strength and guidance to face colossal challenges, select companions for his mission, and perform miraculous acts that revealed God's magnificence. Prayer was his source of power and wisdom. Consider Jesus' agony, so intense that it is described as sweat-like drops of blood falling to the ground, Luke 22:44. In that critical moment, Jesus didn't seek courage within himself, instead, he turned to prayer. The divine response to his supplication was immediate and powerful, an angel came from heaven to strengthen him, Luke 22 43. This episode underscores that when facing overwhelming challenges, we can follow Jesus' example, seeking God's help and strength in prayer. The selection of his disciples, a pivotal moment in Jesus' ministry, was preceded by an entire night of prayer, Luke 6 12 and 13. Jesus didn't make this decision lightly, he sought God's guidance and wisdom. This act teaches us that when facing significant decisions, we should emulate Jesus, seeking direction in prayer, ensuring that our choices align with the divine will. Jesus' miracles are also deeply intertwined with prayer. Before performing the miracle of raising Lazarus, Jesus addressed God with gratitude and acknowledgement, John 11:41 and 42. This act not only showed his dependence on God but also emphasized that the purpose of miracles was to glorify God, not man. Jesus used prayer to align his miraculous actions with the divine purpose, ensuring that each wonder served as a testament to God's power and love. Therefore, prayer in Jesus' life was not merely a tool to ask for help but a means to align with God's will, make wise decisions, and acknowledge the source of all power and authority. Prayer was Jesus' direct line to the Father, a channel through which divine grace flowed, equipping him for his redemptive mission. To recap, we have highlighted two fundamental aspects, the duality of Jesus as fully divine and human, and the concept of the Trinity. Jesus, as part of the Trinity, maintained constant communication with the Father, thus illustrating the unique relationship within the divinity. Jesus' prayer life, a reflection of both his humanity and divinity, offers us a model to follow, reminding us of the importance of seeking God's guidance strength and presence, in every aspect of our lives. Jesus' prayers revealed an unwavering trust in God the Father, modeling total dependence on divine wisdom and strength, even in the face of the most overwhelming challenges. His pleas, like the one made in Gethsemane, Father, if you are willing, take this cup from me, yet not my will, but yours be done, are a testament to his complete submission to God's will. These prayers offer a window into his redemptive mission, showcasing his unwavering commitment to the divine plan of saving humanity. Moreover, Jesus' prayers extended beyond his personal needs. He fervently prayed for his disciples and all believers, asking for their unity and protection, John 17 20-23, thus reflecting his role as an intercessor. These moments of prayer reveal the depth of his love and commitment to his mission, highlighting his constant concern for the spiritual and physical well-being of his followers. Taking Jesus' example, we are invited to reflect on the role of prayer in our own lives. Jesus, being the Son of God, recognized the importance of withdrawing to solitary places to pray, Luke 5:16. If Jesus saw the need for prayer, how much more should we, his followers, cultivate an active and meaningful prayer life? His example is not just a ritual to follow but an invitation to develop a personal relationship with God, where we can lay down our concerns and find guidance and comfort. The essence of our moments with God through prayer is a gift, a dialogue, and an offering of peace. As we reflect on Jesus' life, let us consider how our own prayer life aligns with his example. May his life inspire us to seek God earnestly, to listen and speak with him, to ask and submit, and through this, to deeply know his love and presence in our daily life. Let us pray, Heavenly Father, we come to you in humble adoration, recognizing your infinite wisdom and the depth of your love that often surpasses our understanding. As we contemplate the life of Jesus, your Son and our Savior, we reflect on the mystery of his prayers to you. Lord, we recognize that in Jesus' prayers we see the perfect reflection of humility and dependence. Just as he turned to you, we too lift our eyes and hearts in prayer, seeking your guidance, strength, and a closer relationship with you. In moments when we struggle to understand the divine, we ask for simple and trusting faith in your goodness and plan. Teach us, O God, to emulate the prayerful attitude of Jesus, knowing that being God, 
he bowed in communion with you. We are invited to that sacred space of conversation and intimacy with you, through his example. May we understand the importance of prayer as a means to express our love, our needs, and our gratitude in our daily lives. In moments of trial or joy, let us remember Jesus' example, turning to you in prayer, just as he did. May his life remind us that in our weaknesses we find your strength, in our doubts your wisdom, and in our loneliness your comfort. Come with your presence and blessing, granting us the peace that comes from knowing you are always near, listening to the longings of our hearts. Strengthen us with the same spirit that was in Christ Jesus, so that in every circumstance we find the courage to say, not my will, but yours be done. In the holy name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. And so, we come to the end of this presentation. Thank you for being part of our channel, a space where we seek to share wisdom and reflections on faith. I send you a warm greeting and a strong embrace. Until next time, and may God bless you.